Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at an interesting keyboard. Uh, last year, Drop announced they were releasing a new keyboard. Before the price came out, the layout came out at 75% with a knob. Very popular layout at the time and, well, even now. So a lot of people assumed that the keyboard would be in the $150 to $200 range, which was price range that most of these other keyboards were going for. But when they announced it, it was $349 pre-built with the black and $399 for the white. Now granted, it was preloaded with Dropbox Pandas as well as a DCX keycap set, but bare bone, it was $249 and $299 which a lot of reviews came back and said, just does not seem like it's worth it. This past week, Drop decided to put the Send 75 on sale for $99 bare bone. So I had to figure out, is the Drop Sense worth $99? At $299, it didn't seem so, but at $99, it might just be. But that's what we're here to find out today. So let's go ahead and dive on in all right so here we have uh, the drop sense just arrived uh, we do not seem to have a sleeve we just have the uh, label on the back sense 75 nightfall which is black bare bone keyboard and the product all right and here we have our first look of the drop sense 75 uh, first impressions it's lighter than I expected it to be. Now, of course, the switches and keycaps in here. This is a Mod 007. And this is at least half the weight of this. Taking an M1, wow. This is probably around a third the weight of that, and that's just me guessing. We have a very light aluminum frame. I do say I like this brushed blue steel look that this, um, I believe it's an aluminum plate. Let me confirm. Yep, that is an aluminum plate. Um, and we do have screw and stabilizers. Though, no way, really? So the screw and stabilizers uh, are completely bone dry. All right, so obviously we're gonna need to do something about that. But right now, I'm deciding if I'm actually gonna keep this. I mean, Drop has a nice return policy and I mean, so far I'm not convinced this is a $99 keyboard even. Now turning it around, we've got this, I guess that's the weight, the brushed aluminum. I believe there's a bra uh, brass one, if I'm not mistaken, but I mean, I like that color better, but it's not adding much weight. And then we can see, I mean, that's less than two millimeters thick. So we see that we have a reset button down here at the space bar. Uh, which has become common in a lot of the uh, Q series of key crons. Uh, even there's some of their K series, I believe. But I'm kind of just uh, a little thrown off that the stabilizers are completely dry. I know it's bare bone, but they're screwing. So am I supposed to take them apart just to... Today, I'm just going to be loading up with switches and keycaps to gauge if this is really a worthwhile investment because, I mean, so far, I feel I'm going to have to put work into this if I want it to be anything worthwhile at the end of the day. Now, we do seem to have a little bit of flex. I, I thought I remember reading that it really didn't have much flex, but it has sufficient. I'm not about crazy flex. Just give me a little bit because it helps with the sound. Now, I think you can tell by the that's thin that's thin metal i mean it could keep pulling up another keyboard but i mean that hurts that i'm knocking on a piece of aluminum that's thick um that's at least five maybe eight millimeters thick if not more this is maybe one two millimeters if that i feel like if i hit it hard enough i could dent it I don't believe this is even CNC'd. This might be um, 
what is it pressed oh, I forgot the other way that they do it's not molded but yeah I don't I don't believe this is high grade aluminum either so um, we've got your standard uh, knob Let's see if it's a D knob yep there's a D knob it has an outside I'm gonna guess aluminum cover with an inside plastic collar fits nice in the hole oh yeah we can definitely see some of the flex right there and uh, these acrylic piece I don't know this it doesn't seem like I don't know I'm trying to think I'm not a designer hardware wise but I'm just trying to think what was going on when this was being designed and why sense what am I sensing I mean there's not I want a keyboard that's substantial and this isn't that substantial so like I said today I'm just gonna I'm gonna see is it is it worth keeping is it worth keeping so I got these that I got on sale actually last week um, are the drop holy panda X so I have already opened one pack just to try them out I have not lubed these, so we're going stock all the way here, baby. But I did already open this up. I mean, the tactile bump isn't... I mean, you start off on the bump. There's no pre-travel. But it's not... It's not very strong. It's not very pronounced. And it doesn't have a satisfying bottom out. What's the big deal with these? Seriously, what's the big deal about these drop Panda X? Um, oh well. So uh, anyway, I've got these which I'm gonna load up. The one thing I just realized, I only got two packs of these and they're 35, so I've only got 70. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, since I don't do much testing of the function row and the navigation column, I'm just gonna put some Aqua Starfish. So, it's actually a lot more fun. <laughs> but, um. So I'll start with the Holy Pandas, and I'll just stay to this section. And if I happen to put any uh, other ones, I'll stay away from them in the sound test. So for keycaps, I also got something else from Drop. This is this whole build is basically a Drop build, but sponsored by me <laughs> um, and my DKC club. Anyway, I have been eyeing Vlatsky SA for so long and it finally went on sale this is how i received it though in baggies alphas mods not very impressed i mean for what they normally go for to get these in bags i've got kitco containers they can go in so that's fun but i just expected a little bit better packaging i don't know anyway let me go ahead and load up we're going to load up the pandas. We're going to load up the uh, keys of the Oblonsky. And then I'm going to talk about it. Then we'll do a sound test and decide, is it worth keeping? Is the drop set 75 worth 99 bucks? Let's see. so here we are we built the drop sets 
75 with drop hand to X and S.A. Oblitsky. Uh, S.A. <laughs> it's very um, slippery. The one word I would use to describe this keyboard is bell because it's nothing but a hollow metallic sound. Um, I, at first I thought the pleat tolerances were way off uh, in the video. You perhaps could notice how much I had to fight to get the Drop X Panda switches into the plate. Um, it wasn't the PCB, it was the plate that was fighting me. But as soon as I pulled out the Akos, they went right in without any issue. So, um, I guess that's on the drops. I, I know they're made by Gatoron, but wow, that was that was some work. They're gonna gonna be fun to take out. Let me say. Um, I I'm on the fence. Can I make this keyboard sound better? Well, that's a challenge. Am I willing to take it? Is it worth a hundred dollars? Or am I not? Can you guys help me decide? Down in the comments below, if you guys want me to take this, open it up, and mod it, and do the full course, and see if I can actually finesse this into a keyboard that's worth $99 plus some elbow grease, or should I just say nah and send it back? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the sound test for you guys, stock as it is, so that can help you guys make the decision. I've already played with it and like I saw, said, the word that comes to mind is bell. So hmm, yeah, I'm I'm honestly I'm 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 on the fence. I mean, uh, half of me is like, oh this is a challenge, take it. But the other half is like it's a hundred dollars and you've got a whole closet of keyboards that you can pull out and start making better, but that sound better than this stock. I mean, I did a review for a Techware Phantom um, Plus, and it sounds much better than this stock. That's a $49 keyboard. So, it is plastic, but I mean, you're buying a keyboard for a lot of different factors. Obviously, looks is one of them. Sound is definitely up there. So I'm just, I'm honestly perplexed at what was happening in Drops Design Studios that they were like, yeah, I think this is the keyboard that we need to go with next because it's going to sell. And I think we need to price it twice the price than any other competitor, even though we're spending half as much. I don't know. I'm not blaming Drop. I, I actually, somebody posted in Budget Keeps today about, you know, uh, this keyboard being on sale for $99 and uh, someone commented don't buy drop it's like mm, why I mean drop had its issues a little while ago but as of the past year year and a half drop for one has one of the best uh, customer service departments and in, in this industry uh, bar none but Yes, they do sell some stuff that's overpriced, but don't buy it, but they do have a lot of ways to earn coupons and earn cash. So they have they have that leeway or that margin that they can, you know, get away with discounting some stuff. And I, I have gotten I love my MT three sets and I've gotten all of them on BOGO or on sale. I mean I paid for one set, uh, Captain America, I paid thirteen dollars. That was with shipping I had a bunch of coupons and everything, but I paid $13 for an MT3 keycap set. It's hard to find a cheap XDA PBT set on Amazon for $13. So, um, I mean, trust me, there's vendors I won't deal with. And I will say, I wouldn't buy from that vendor. But I'm not going to go and tell people don't buy from that vendor. Because that's gatekeeping. I mean, I know people like what but it is you're telling somebody what they should or shouldn't do you're you're telling them what the rules of the hobby that they want to enjoy is and that's just that's not 
I'm not for gatekeeping at all. Let people enjoy what they enjoy. Don't tell people what to do. You can share your opinions of what you would do, and perhaps they'll take it, perhaps they won't. But you can't give orders to other people. You can't tell people how to enjoy a hobby. That's not how it works. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. This is a drop set 75, completely stock, with drop X, pan, or drop Panda X, with drop Panda X, stock as well, and SA Blitzky, all from drop. So, again, you guys let me know, should I? Should I stay or should I go? Should I mod this? Should I keep it? And should I put the, the effort into it to make it sound and feel and be the best drop sense it can be? Or do I send it back to drop and let them put it out of its misery? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keep word on.